This is my studio, which is a room in my house in, in East London. And I make wood engravings here and lino cuts and collages. So I have an exhibition at the Mercer Art Gallery, which is going to be of Olympic themed works because out of the window here and heading heading slightly east just two stops on the bus is the uh, Olympic Stadium and the Velodrome and all, all of the rest of the fantastic developments going on over there which was too good an opportunity to miss really. For the last three years now since 2009 I've been making drawings and engravings and collages based on the changing site over there and the changing landscape and the, the new architecture and um, I'm very excited that it's it's going to be shown in Harrogate. Right back at the beginning, three three years ago or maybe more, uh, when the the announcement was, was made that the Olympics would be held here in East London, my immediate reaction was, "Wow, you know, that's that's on my doorstep. I have to <laughs> I have to do something with that." And I immediately got on a bus and had a wander around. And because it was so very early on, there were there were places you could just wander into and draw that you knew were earmarked for the site but nothing had been cordoned off yet um, and that was when I did most of my drawing in fact um, and then a little bit at the beginning when the diggers moved in and excavations were beginning but alas the, the security has been tightened to the point that it became impossible for me to to get close but there are various walkways near to a local park where um, you can go and walk and get some fairly decent views. So roundabout ways, I've, <laughs> I've gone in there with a sketchbook and, and with a camera um, and I've also sourced images on the internet to show me panoramic views that I would have had to be up on a crane or in a helicopter to, to achieve. So my final images are a sort of amalgamation of things from my drawings and, and a bit more information from these internet photographs. Here's a, a view, an aerial view of the Olympic site before the stadium was in place. This is now where the stadium is and this is how it looks in my engraving. So they're by no means direct copies, the, the, the structure is there but they're very much reinterpreted to be turned into engravings. This isn't a particular work, what this is is it's a little test block that I use for checking whether my tools are sharp enough. Um, I always have a little block like this on the go while I'm working on a, a, a proper work such as something like this. Um, but it's also a useful demonstration of particular types of marks because all the tools that I have are designed to make a particular different sort of mark. This is a spit sticker which has a sort of teardrop shaped cutting face and slightly rounded sides but it comes to a point um, and this tool is designed for making kind of curving lines that the, the slightly curved edges of it help you make a curve um, but to make a curve instead of moving the tool on the block you actually turn the block so the tool stays in the same place and the block does the moving This is a square-ended scorper, so it comes to a squared off cutting tip here at the end and the back actually is, is squared off as well. And this tool is for making either quite large stippled dots but would have a square profile with a tool of that, that width. Um, but it's also a tool that you could use for cutting out large areas that you wanted white on a design or for making a really broad line like this. I'm going to roll out some printing ink, just a little bit of this oil-based black printing ink to ink up this block and print it. You only need, one of the joys of engraving is you really only need a tiny amount of ink. That's ample. So these tubes of ink last for ages because you only ever use a really small amount. And then roll it out. It has to stop making these kind of noises. It has to become nice and smooth and silky before it's ready to 
roll onto the block because the block has got such fine, fine marks cut into it. If the ink is too thick, then it will just squeeze into the fine marks you've made, whereas you're actually looking for it to just sit on the uncut surface. So then, take my block and then just roll. You use the, the roller's own weight. I'm not pressing on the block at all. I'm just using the roller's own weight. And you change directions a few times so that it gets inked up from several different directions. Okay. So now I lift the tin pan of the press, which is this part, put the block down in the, on the bed of the press here in a little registration mark that I've mapped out. There's another mark here for a larger block that I was working on. And now I have printing paper. And that just aligns with the outer pencil marks on the, on the template here. lay that on and then we lower the tin pan and turn the handle so that the whole press bed is underneath the platen of the press which is this part pull the arm they want to pull the arm all the way because it needs a fair bit of pressure to print these things And then I wind the whole thing back out again and lift up the tin pan. And then this is our moment of truth. We'll see what we get. It's a good one. <laughs> particular architectural features of, of the Olympic site that I've been most interested in have been the, the velodrome in its initial stages when it was a large circular piece of earthworks with, with diggers in there and also the stadium. Um, there's something about that particular circular form um, and it relates to earlier works that I've made of the Colosseum in Rome. Um, it's just something very satisfying about that, that kind of perfect circle. I'm rather pleased with this body of work as a whole. Um, I don't often say that <laughs> about my work, but I do feel that it's done what I set out to do. It's charted the whole thing from the very beginning before any of the uh, old buildings on the site were demolished up to the present day to the, the, the finished architectural pieces. In fact, the very latest works I've done were of the aquatic centre, which I hadn't originally intended to include, but various people had said to me, oh, you, that's one of the, the key buildings. You can't have just the velodrome in the stadium. You need to include the aquatic centre. And I thought, you know, that's right, I do. So I do feel that I've actually done the whole thing and, and developed it through collages in, in ways that, that seem to me to have resonance and seem to have a come sort of full circle. I feel now I'm at a full stop with it though because now it's finished and opened <laughs> and ready for action. That's kind of where, where my input ends in a way. I, I've <laughs> charted that development and now I'm, I'm ready to move on to a, a, a new subject. <laughs>